Welcome everybody today for our webinar. Pretty exciting. We're going to be looking at uh, Indigo Design App Builder. For many of you, this will be the first time that you're seeing it. I'm going to run through sort of a high level webinar today and uh, and let you know about some future webinars that we have coming up as well. Uh, but we want you to get excited about this product. It's pretty slick. Uh, it definitely will help you accelerate your app design process. And I'm going to go through a bunch of demos today to give you a flavor of, of how we can really help out here. So my name is Jason Barris. I'm the Senior VP of Developer Tools here at Infragistics. Joining me today is John McGuigan. He'll be manning the chat line and the Q&A area uh, to alert me if things pop up. Uh, what, what I'd like you to do is, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them in the Q&A box or there's a chat. You can use either one and uh, I'll probably answer them live. Uh, there's a lot of people in the webinar today, so we'll see how that goes. If not, we'll kind of wait till the end. But the agenda today, uh, we're going to show you how to get started with pre-built templates, how to use the theming. Uh, in Indigo Design App Builder. And then I'm going to show you a demo of taking a sketch file and then getting it into uh, a real application, which is actually pretty slick. All this will be through uh, some demos. I got three slides, I think, today, maybe four, and then we'll spend the time on the demo since we only have 30 minutes. We will send out the slides uh, and the recording after the webinar. I think we'll probably do that either later today or tomorrow morning. Uh, usually the slides we put up on SlideShare uh, and the webinar, I think we'll send a link to, right, JJ? Yep, but it'll all be in a follow-up email. All right, cool. Um, and yep, go ahead and ask questions in the question window. So how do you accelerate app building with pre-built layouts? If you're not familiar with Indigo Design App Builder, I think you'll be blown away today at what we've brought to market over the last few months. Uh, this product's been in a preview for maybe um, eight or nine months. Uh, we released it in the June timeframe, and we're continuing to improve it based on your feedback, based on the type of apps that you're building, and how we can really accelerate um, your app design process. So what we've done in App Builder is the goal is that we're trying to remove all of this complexity that you have as a developer when it comes to building layouts and apps for the web. So one of the things that usually happens is you're a desktop developer coming from something like Windows Forms, WPF, or even ASP.NET, and then you're like, hey, we got to build an Angular app. All of a sudden, you have to learn CSS, layout, and you're like, where the heck do I get started? Most app templates out there today are based on like WordPress or not business type apps. So you need a way to just get going, right? How can you just give me something like an app that I can maybe copy paste a bunch of stuff, maybe put in my own data, um, or how can I just build a complete end-to-end -end app where I've got all the screens and then you're gonna give me that code output, sort of like building a Windows Forms app or building a Visual Basic 6 app. It's, it's really the same idea. So what we shipped with in the first version of this product is some basic empty layouts. And then we have uh, today about five sample apps by the end of the year we want to have like 30 or 40 sample apps so we're going through this process now of figuring out what types of templates you really need so then you can just go in here grab an app change a few things and bam um, go and impress your boss on how much work you got done the beautiful thing about this unlike the, the designers what they do is they're going to show off like uh static images or vector images you're actually getting code that's generated throughout this whole process. So that's what makes this unique in the market and actually really cool. Now, part of that is theming. And I'm gonna walk through the themes today, show you our pre-built themes, how you can create your, uh, your own custom themes. But the idea is if you didn't have the ability to make this look like what your branding is, then it probably wouldn't be very useful. And at the same time, CSS and all that theming stuff is really hard for developers coming from desktop or even web developers who always need some designer to come in and start doing this stuff for you. Well, we're gonna do all that part of the app builder for free so you don't have to worry about it. So all these issues start getting removed. The way we do layout is flex-based. So your screens will uh, be responsive by their very nature because it is a web-based flex layout. And all of this just comes out of the box. Like you don't really have to think about 
what do I do next? And of course you might have to like, hey, what is a material theme? What's a bootstrap theme? Or what is a flex layout? How do I do flex layout? There's tons of tutorials, we have docs, there's all kinds of ways you can learn that. But the goal here is a WYSIWYG drag, drag and drop UI to get you started and kick off your development. So how do you do this? There's really three steps to getting this theming done. You're gonna select one of the themes from our pre-built options. You select your primary and secondary colors, um, or you just say, give me a new theme and you start picking your own colors, which is okay. Each one of our themes comes with a light and dark variation. Uh, you can modify these at the app application level, the screen level, the component level. So let's say you have this beautiful uh, dark theme or you have this cool green theme, but you want one button to kind of go outside of that, no problem. We will allow you to set those properties on a per component uh, basis. And then as well with each one of these themes, you can choose different illustrations, iconography, elevations, typography, et cetera. So even when we apply, for example, the material theme versus the bootstrap theme, if you're familiar with those at all, they actually change the way your app looks. I mean, the buttons are shaped differently, switches are different, fonts are different, display density is different, all that's built into the product. You don't have to worry about it. And then you simply apply this. So you apply it to the application, and what we're doing behind the scenes is we're generating all the CSS at the app level. So when you run this application, you don't have to worry about duplicate stuff all over the place. Essentially, you are um, you know, just getting some CSS and it's gonna to apply to your application. The one big thing that we did with this product is we made sure that any of the CSS, any of the code that gets generated will pass the sniff test of your best developer. So if you look at the code, you would say, yep, I would write code just like this. It's not like a black box where you're wondering what the heck's going on behind the scenes. Um, it's actually really solid code. And if you don't think so, please tell us. We'd love to hear your feedback and we will make sure that it passes your sniff test. One of the issues with a lot of these low code tools today or, or app building type tools is it's a black box or like even using Microsoft's um, uh, Power Builder, I think it's called Power Apps, uh, it's like all this funky custom stuff that you have to learn. Like you have to learn their way of building the app versus like your standard way of building an Angular app or a Blazor app or a React app. So we're really trying to make this uh, make sense for you. So let's go ahead and jump into a demo here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is bring up um, uh, Indigo Design. So let me go ahead and create a new browser instance here and just... and. So you all can follow along. I'm gonna to go to the URL indigo.design. So at this URL, we have the homepage for the product, all the good stuff here. Some of the things that are important as a beginner, our learning library and our help docs are pretty extensive. So if you go to our learning library, we've got a bunch of videos. Um, and if I scroll back up, we've got different help docs. But what I wanna do is I wanna jump into the app builder. Now the app builder has its own page has a little bit more explanation on specifically what the app builder can do for you. And it's learning resources are a little bit different. So we've got some different videos here on an intro, how to do layouts, components, getting code, et cetera. One of the things that I wanna highlight here are the sample apps on this page, because this is a great way to sort of see how the whole end-to-end -end process works. So if you're working with a design team that for example, is using Sketch, um, and they have something in Sketch and you wanna get it into App Builder, um, you can play around with some of our samples and I'll show you one of those today. I'm actually gonna take this team collaboration guy here, which I have the Sketch file for, and I'm gonna bring it into App Builder so you can see how that uh, whole flow works. Now, the way that we've built this product is a common application model. So this is a process that we're kind of going through this year from a release perspective. So V1, which we shipped in June, supports sketch images or sketch vector designs. And then later this summer, we're gonna ship Adobe XD and Figma support. So if your team uses XD or Figma, great, we'll flow in. Now you don't have to use any design vector tools with this. You can just start right with the app builder and start building applications right from the toolbox. One of the things that you should be aware of starting from V1 is that we shipped Angular as the code generator. 
coming later this summer, early fall, probably September, October timeframe. Uh, we're going to ship Blazor and React code generation. So all of the code that I show you today is going to be Angular. And then coming later this year, you will be able to do a Blazor app with the same experience, like grab a Figma file from your design team and just make a Blazor app and it's going to be beautiful and perfect. So that's kind of where we're at today with this product. Take a look at this page to read more about it. But what I'm going to do is just sign in and jump right into the app experience. So usually, and in fact, let me sign out just so you can see how, how this whole thing works. And yeah, I got some password violations there. Um, so if I'm in here and I click sign in, you're going to be taken to our universal login. So you can use a Google ID, Microsoft, Apple, or your Infragistics ID. And then you're inside of your own space inside of the app builder. So I'm just going to use my Infragistics ID and I'm going to sign in. Now, the way Indigo Design works as an entire digital product design platform, uh, we have a bunch of different features to it. And in fact, um, again, just for your information, if you go to learn and support and you go to blogs, I actually just posted a blog today on all you need to know about digital product design platforms. So you can sort of see all the things that this platform has. So Indigo Design is very robust, has a lot of capability and features. The one that we're gonna talk about today is App Builder because that's really what developers care about and it's kind of what they do. So across the top, I've got prototypes, usability studies, user tests, and then apps. We're gonna focus on apps. So the way apps work is two, two uh, things you can do here. You can click new app, or you can check out our sample app. So if I click view sample apps up in the upper right, our little pop down is going to show you all of the different uh, templates uh, for full end-to-end -end apps that we're shipping. And at the same time, if I click new app, I get a dialogue which is um, very similar. So you'll see that I got sample apps across the top. I've got some default layouts that I can choose from. And then I've got this box here underneath, which is where I can drop my sketch files, which we're gonna do in a second. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open up one of these applications. So I'll pick the first one. I'll click try sample. This guy here is called team collaboration. And what we're doing is now we're bringing you inside of the app builder, which if you've used Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, Visual Studio, whatever tool that you happen to use, um, it's gonna look very familiar. So on the left-hand side, I've got a toolbox, and let me pull this down a little bit, of UI controls. I've got an outline of my document object model. So you can see here all of the objects that are part of my screen. I have over on the left side, I have my master view and then my sub pages. So this builds single page applications with that master view concept. And then you're injecting components all along um, the way. I've got data. So today we support REST and O data sources. We also ship with uh, a default Northwind database. So you can just start binding to data right away. And then of course I have my, my themes. So the idea with these UI components is, again, if I go back to the Infragistic site and I go to all of our UI controls in Ignite UI, our design system, which we surface through UI kits for Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, maps to all of the components that live inside of our uh, component sets. So here, if I just pop up data grid, you'll see all of the controls that you get, grids, charts, maps, gauges, all kinds of you know smaller primitives that you would need to make up a UI, interactions, layouts, menus. So all of these are in the design system. All of them are in our component set for Ignite UI, and they all get surfaced in the toolbox for the app builder. So that's how these three things come together. So in order to guarantee code output, we're going to make sure that everything is always synchronized, all the versions are correct, and you don't have to worry about it. So it makes it pretty slick. But you can see here, if I go back to my individual screens, like my tasks, I select an item. I can see on the right-hand side, the properties for that item as well. It gets selected within the dialog below. And each one of these guys actually is, you know, just basic stuff that you can go ahead and start changing, change the types, change the uh, the way it's positioned, change the location, 
uh, you can do uh, interaction events. So here you'll see interactions. And what I did here um, as part of this sample is when you click these items, you actually have interaction. So if I click the top item for tasks, you'll see it says navigate to my tasks. So we've got navigate to, open, close, show, hide. So you can do dialogues or you can use just navigation schemes. And then whatever happens to be in your application, um, you can go ahead and navigate to that. So from this, just as a, a real high level example, if I click preview, I'm gonna go ahead and see, and in fact, let me turn off code view for now. I can see the application. I can see that I have some navigation here and the rest of this stuff, there's really nothing happening. I just have a couple um, uh, child screens, but across the top, this header and the left-hand side are part of my master page. So these pages are getting injected at runtime, just like what would happen is if you were creating an Angular app or React app, et cetera. Now the magic comes in here on the code view. So the code view is where you can see the HTML, the TypeScript, and the CSS that we're generating either for the screen or for the entire application. So when you look at this, for example, you can see that this is an IGX list and the IGX list is are these items here that I'm clicking on the left-hand side. So that's part of my left nav. Um, as I scroll down, we've got uh, uh, another uh, list with some cards in it. So these cards are pointing off to images on the web. Now, in this case, this is hard coded. I'm going to show you in a minute how you would actually bind it to data, but all of this code you get as part of it. So it's clean generated code. And then moving on, you can actually go back to edit and you can generate this application. So we'll allow you to download a zip file, which you can pull into VS Code. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, or you can synchronize this with GitHub. But what I want to do for this webinar specifically is show a couple more uh, features of the product, and then we'll go into some of the other layouts. So you'll notice here as I select a different um, theme on the left hand side, the entire application is changing. So all you to change the theme, you can select one of our pre built themes and notice the difference between, for example, this is material light and we'll look at fluent dark. So fluent dark, and let's go back up to our um, master view to look at a few of these other buttons and controls. So you'll notice that like the task button on the top is actually changing size, density, and elevation based on the theme that I'm actually picking because material is going to be different than bootstrap themes. It's gonna be different than your um, fluent themes. Now, maybe you don't want to use one of these themes. You also have the concept of custom themes. So in this, in my workspace, I actually have three custom themes. One of them, and let me go back to uh, the tasks view here and then themes. So this is my uh, test color theme. Here's the theme for the travel app, which I'll show you in a second. You can see the fonts are different. Um, it's using the Bodhi Poppins fonts and this is using the Bodhi Convent. Uh, con condensed. Now I'm going to click the plus sign here and let's say I want to do the new theme. We'll call this the webinar theme. And for the webinar theme, I want to start with bootstrap and I want it to be dark and I want the colors to be a little bit different here. So I'm going to change my, this to be a little bit more blue. Um, I want the surface to be actually a little bit lighter like so. And um, typography. The Roboto font is nice, but let's go ahead and use the Playfair because this is going to be a really cool app. Um, for our radiuses, we'll use rounded edges and we'll use uh, an elevated shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now you'll see I've got the webinar theme. And now the entire uh, theme for my application has changed. What's nice about this is when I go over to preview and I go over to CSS, all of the CSS now is going to be updated at the application level for this theme. So I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, if, for example, I want to go to this dashboard screen and I want this guy to, um, you know, change the elevation to an outline, um, I can change the color, for example, to, of this background. 
So let's change the border to something a little louder like red. So that'll have a red border now. So those can be overriding at the individual widget level or at the component level, but all of my other screens will still flow through uh, with these themes. So it's kind of a nice way to do it. So let's go real quickly back to my projects and I am going to do a new app. And what I wanna do this time is I want to show you one of the newer ones we did, which is the travel app. It's a little bit different than the uh, collaboration app. It has a few different screens here. So I've got some repeater controls with some nice imagery. I've got a dashboard view and this one has an entire login scheme. So one of the uh, other things that we're gonna be doing with this is shipping web parts. So like this whole login scheme would be part of web parts. So if you guys need to do logins, you could just take the login template and stick it in and you're kind of done. So if I preview this application, you can see I have all of this uh, menu on the left-hand side. It looks like articles and dashboards are the two screens that I want here. Now, if I go back um, to the home, of course, all my code is generated here. Um, well, I'm not quite sure how to get to the login, but anyway, um, the point here is that it's super visual. You don't have to worry about doing any of the hard part, which is the layout, because you're literally just dragging and dropping from the toolbox, and then you get the code view here. Another nice feature that we just added was the ability to ship or to shift through pages in the upper left. So if there is no nav, like I couldn't find the nav, I can just go to uh, this home page and then go through the sign up process here. So now I'm logged in. If I go back to home, I'll click forgot password. Now I'm at the forget password sign or uh, sign in form. And you can see that all of the HTML uh, TypeScript and CSS are built up for me. I don't have to worry about it. So going back as well, I don't have to go all the way back to my, my projects to take a look at another template. Um, let's take a look at one of the default layouts. If I use a left uh, or a header plus left nav, I'll use that layout. And you can see how quick this is. It just kind of loaded my app instantly. And this is your typical starting point for a lot of you is that you've got an idea, you know you need a nav, you know you need some sort of a layout. Maybe you need uh, like a dark uh, theme and you kind of want to kickstart this app. So now you would start just dragging and dropping um, components. So one of the shortcuts is you can either scroll, find components, you can search here or hit control E and this play and this uh, thing, I will just say, hey, let me do control E, type in grid, a grid comes up. What I want to do with this guy is I want to start at the top. It's a center layout. I want to do a wrap and I want to actually get rid of this, um, this piece of content. And actually, let's go back here, uh, top left and top like so. And I want this guy to be 100% like that. And the other thing that I want to do here is just highlight that the data binding works like so. If I have data connected, I can easily come in here. And now I've got the grid uh, in this page. Let's go back to our master view. And you can see that we have a content um, container here. These are my views. The navigation is already built in for these guys. So if I click this, you can see navigate to view one in the lower right, view two, view three. I'm going to click preview. And just like that, I've got an app that I can just start building and it's got all straight up clean code that has data binding, it has components that are real and it's done in Angular. So the sky's the limit for how this thing can work and what you can do with it. Now, I said I wanted to show you how to take a sketch file. Um, since we have a few minutes left, I'm gonna go back to show you where to get these sketch files. Um, let me uh, get rid of this little guy here. I'll put it there. So let's go back to the Indigo app builder page. Again, if you scroll down to sample apps, click here. I've got all these sample apps. And what I did is I took team collaboration. I clicked learn more and I said download sketch file. So that downloaded to my desktop. So it's actually sitting right there on my desktop. So let's go back to Indigo Design. I'm gonna do a new app. Here I've got uh, the ability to drag and drop a sketch file. I'll just grab it from here. 
I'll open it up. Now it's taking an actual sketch file that a designer did maybe in another part of the world uh, wherever, totally disconnected from me, but it's being, I could collaborate with this through the Indigo design platform, or they could just send me this file. So like magic, all of a sudden I've got <laughs> this file that was built in sketch now creating actual real screens and the magic that we do is that we take that absolute positioning that you do in sketch or figma or xd and we turn it into a flex layout for the web so now it's completely responsive uh, which is absolutely unbelievable and to prove that let's go here and i actually do have uh, adobe xd installed on this machine i think um yeah it's over here uh, it's trying to load here. Hold on a sec. And so here I've got Adobe XD and you can see here is what this guy looks like inside of Adobe XD. It's um, this is not at builder. This is actually Adobe XD. It's got a bunch of properties and things and components and whatnot. Now all of that is reflected here inside of um, this application. Now, to really make this work. And actually what's cool here is let's say I wanna just change my font. You can see that some stuff will have to get um, uh, modified a little bit. We're still trying to perfect all of the aspects of the theming and all that, but I can go ahead now and get started. So what I can do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add two child views because I wanna um, start treating this like an app. One of the things you'll notice is here that I've got the repeated header and the repeated nav, right, from my, um, sketch file. So using this handy document outline, you can see when I select items, it's actually showing me what these items are. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the group one and group two, which is this and this. I'm going to do a control X. I'm going to go to my child view and I'm going to paste it. So that would be my child view and that would be tasks, right? And then I've got dashboards here. So I'm going to go down here and it's just easier when you select these um, groups uh, to then go ahead and copy them this way than trying to select everything through here, even though you can, but to make sure it's like perfectly correct, I just go ahead and grab group one, group two, control X, I'll go to my child view two, paste that in, I'm going to delete this guy and we'll say okay. I'm going to go ahead and call this dashboards and I'm going to call this guy home and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say interactions, navigate to tasks on this one here, interactions, navigate to dashboards, boom, preview. Now, when I click these guys, they're actually, whoops, one thing I forgot What's critical, these are single page applications. So I have to click inside of this area where I want everything to be at. And I need something called a views container. So the views container is where I'm going to load all of my um, pages. So now you can see here with a couple changes, I'm back, I got my whole app, I got all the code. And in the next webinar, we're gonna show you how to take all this and replace it with data bound, um, uh, code and how to take that into GitHub and all that other good stuff. So anyway, we're out of time. Uh, let me go back over to our slides. Hopefully you guys got a nice whirlwind demo of what this was all about today. We have a question. I have a C-sharp fat application using only for skins can take the code. Uh, no, what you do is, I mean, just recreate the screens. The whole idea with this is this is drag and drop. So to recreate those screens, will take literally minutes, not days and weeks if you had to hand code it yourself. So we just recommend duplicating it, getting into getting it into the right flex layout for the web so it's responsive. Um, and then we're just gonna generate all that code for you. So what happens is if you had to redo that yourself, uh, I mean, literally it could take days or weeks. This will take minutes. Uh, using App Builder eliminates about 80% of the time that it would take to actually go ahead um, and start from scratch. So uh, you do get a ton of benefit there. So to wrap up, using pre-built templates or drawing inspiration from our library of sample apps, you saw a couple today, go ahead and log in. Uh, you get a 30-day trial, start playing with those uh, today. 
really just scratches the surface. We have a series of webinars now. We're doing these every two weeks, 30 minute quick hits. Uh, next one, we're gonna show you more code, how to actually go from uh, you know, some of the static lists into dynamic lists, how to pull in rest data, um, and really just go from that design to code in seconds. But before that, I do have a poll. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll to give us um, a little bit more information. If you guys can answer that poll, what or would you like uh, more technical deep dives? Uh, it, like, so for example, is a 30 minute webinar good or do you want like a 45 minute webinar go deeper? Um, do you think App Builder would accelerate your app building process? And then what platforms do you use? Keep in mind, Blazor and React are right around the corner. So if you're sitting there saying, I need Blazor, I need React. And with that comes web components, actually. So web components will come as well. Um, what happened with Angular is we actually have uh, a whole code generator system inside of Visual Studio Code for Sketch apps. Uh, all of our enterprise customers were like Angular, Angular, Angular. And that still seems to be the case. And in this poll, it looks like three out of four, actually a little bit higher, about 80% of folks are doing Angular um, today. But Blazor is a tight second. So uh, pretty exciting. Uh, thank you, everyone, for this information. Um, looks like most folks have voted. I am going to, I don't even know how that works, but I'm going to hit print. Whoops, what was that? I'm sorry there. Let me minimize that. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll, save that data. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. HTTPS indigo.design will take you right to Infragistics Products Indigo Design App Builder. Um, if you want a deep dive uh, and um, you, know, you want uh, more information, contact sales at infragistics.com or email me and I'll give you all the information that you need. Uh, I got a couple more questions here. I'm a product manager. This tool is perfect for product managers. It is perfect for product managers. In fact, our product managers use this tool. They were using Sketch before, um, but because you've got this toolbox and you can do quick layouts, this is great. As a product manager, what you need to learn is go and find a tutorial on using Flex Layout because it'll just rapidly you know, help you build this in the right way. In every screen on the canvas, you can do absolute positioning, which means anywhere you drag, that's where the component sticks. But if you want it to be truly responsive, you need to learn a little bit of that flex layout. But yeah, this is a great tool for product managers. And by the way, the entire Indigo design system is great because if I go back here to my projects and let's say here, I just go to my prototypes, here are just image-based prototypes. You can throw up here like PowerPoint images, sketch files, whatever you want. And then what we do, whoops, that was a new usability test. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this prototype. We have this whole image-based prototyping system, which will allow you to do things like here. Like um, when I click this, I want this guy to actually go home, whoops, here. And when they click it, it'll do a, a flip. So this is a whole prototyping tool, which you can use, which actually works really well. Um, how does this process fit in with the lifecycle vacation? If I build, if I design the app in Indigo and then generate the initial UI, how do I make modifications? Great question. That's what we're gonna talk about in the next webinar. We synchronize with GitHub. So you would do um, pull requests with GitHub and you can merge changes. Uh, I, you can go and try that today. So. Here, if I go back to uh, one of these apps and I'll go to apps and I'll go to my team collaboration app. Uh, I do not have a repo on GitHub for this, but I can do a new repository. Uh, it can be public or private. And uh, you know, from that point on, I would just synchronize it. So let's say for example, the design team came in with the sketch file and they needed just a new UI for the login. I could drag that in add it to this and then merge it with what's in GitHub and then only apply that to my code. So there is this integration with GitHub. Is it perfect? 
it never will be because doing a two-way sync with these UI tools ends up being pretty hard um, for us, but we do have a good workflow. And in the next webinar, I'm gonna demo that end to end. Okay, thank you. That is awesome, great comment. Um, and it looks like, uh, oh, would I have to replace the sketch designed input for what? Yes, yeah, so this is what you would need to do. That's a great question. Um, so if I go back to App Builder, the way that all of this kind of ties together is you need to use our design system and UI kits. So here, if I go to downloads, Ignite UI, uh, Ignite Des Indigo Design UI kit. So I download this UI kit and let's see, uh, let me open this up in Adobe XD. Oops, come on there. Actually, let's do that, that, drag this out. Let me open this up in XD. And what we have as part of our design system are all of the components, all of the screens, all the libraries that you would use in Sketch, XD, or Figma to create this. Um, and uh, it seems like it's a big file. It'll take a minute to load, but you'll be able to see it. And, and I'm not using my Mac or else this would open up in Sketch and you could see how it all works. Uh, can I edit the code? Yeah, you can do whatever you want with this thing. It's it's flex layout. So any aspect of this design, you can change within uh, the property editor. So let me show you here. So for example, um, here, I've got height, width, spacing, margins, different layout options, static, absolute, relative, fixed, sticky. I can tell it to grow, shrink. I can go back to my canvas, um, which is my container and set its properties for its children. So yeah, you have complete control over layout. Yes, this is for free as part of your ultimate license. So there's two ways to acquire App Builder, Indigo Design or Infragistics Ultimate. So if you're just, if you have Ignite UI, just upgrade. It's like $200, I think, or $300 to upgrade, contact sales and they will be able to hook you up. Uh, and one last thing is we, as part of the learning library, I just wanna highlight uh, on the App Builder page, definitely watch some of these videos. If we go down to the learning resources, um, they're gonna talk you through a bunch of these scenarios and we're constantly adding um, to these videos, but you'll be able to get a feel for the product. Um, but I mean, the best way to do is like, just start with one of the pre-built layouts. It is so cool. Uh, figure out how to add your own data and you're done. I mean, at Infragistics, what we've done over the years uh, is if I go here to our reference apps, we have tons of reference apps based on whatever platform you happen to be using. Um, and, you know, you just go grab one of these and get going right? Copy, paste, add your own data, and you're done. That's what we want you to do. So go grab a sample and do what you need, but we build these so you can just take them. That's the whole purpose of our templates and app builder. We want you to take these apps, customize them with your own data, maybe your own fonts, and then you're done. So that's why I say by the end of the year, we want to have 30, 40 of these things jammed in here. So you have different verticals, different types of apps, different layouts, et cetera, that you can just make your own. So for today, I will end it there. Um, looks like we don't have any more questions. I wanna thank everyone for attending. Uh, two weeks, we have the next webinar, which is I think called Design to Code in Seconds. And I'm gonna go into more of the code stuff and more of the GitHub stuff. So um, thank you everyone, I appreciate it and have a great rest of the week.